Hi, this is Dark Fox 127 and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use your modder's resources in your own mods and also how to best manage them. So I'm also going to be going through a number of tips in this video and it might be fairly long, so you'll have to bear with me. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Ingredients Wall Art resource by Blairy. It's a fairly common resource and it's going to be perfect for this demonstration. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be checking over the permissions. So usually it's in the description, but you'll also want to click the perms button, especially if you're downloading with Skyrim Nexus and get some more detailed information of specifically how you can use this resource. So knowing that I'm okay to go ahead and use it, as long as I give the proper credit, I'm going to go under the file section. Now, in this case, you can download it with Manager. I'm not going to be going through how you can load the Creation Kit through Mod Organizer and use resources that way. I don't personally do it that way, and I'm just going to go through, uh, loose through the data folder, which is how I usually do things. And this will also link with how we can better manage our resources later on. So let's go ahead and download with Manager. In my case, I've probably already gone ahead and done this prior to this video, so I'll just delete that one anyway. And I'll extract it with 7-zip, as I already have here. And if you open it up, you should have meshes and textures. And you'll probably have some other loose information as well, which I've gone ahead and deleted. It's just like a readme and some screenshots, which I don't need. But as long as you've got the main files, your meshes and your textures, you want to go ahead, copy those, and head to your data folder. Now I've got a shortcut on my desktop. This is really useful if you do a lot of modding. But you should know where your data folder is if you're planning on using modders resources and i'm going to paste them in there and i'm going to replace files here because i've already got this resource but just make sure you're not replacing anything that you don't want to but you should be okay to go ahead and do this and sometimes you get this warning just because you're replacing the meshes and the textures folder which won't overwrite everything in there it's only going to overwrite things that are named the same so i'll click that now if we head to Meshes, AARS, and Ingredients Wall Art, you'll see I've got all of those meshes there, and I've also got the same for the textures. Now one really, really useful program that lets me see these visually in Windows Explorer, because they're DDS files, and Windows doesn't know how to view these usually, uh, a very useful program that somebody recommended to me is called Sage Thumbs. I strongly recommend that you go and download that if you haven't got something similar doing this for you because it's just much, much easier to find what you're looking for in Windows Explorer rather than having to open each one up and see what they look like. So now that I've got those in my data folder, I'm going to go ahead, load up the creation kit, and we're going to look at importing this stuff into our own mod. Okay, so when I came across Lammy's Alchemy store in Morthol, I couldn't help but notice that her decor was absolutely dreadful. So what we're going to do is remove these two hawkers off the wall, delete this candle thing that's in the way, and I'm going to place a divider here, and we're going to put our brand new resources on that divider wall. So I'm just going to drag and drop that in. doesn't need to be perfect for now. Put it about there. And I'm going to add my resources. So the way I do this is I'm going to go under whatever category the resource is for. So in this case, it's just a static painting on the wall. And I'm going to alt-click and new. Now I'm going to give it a unique ID to start with. So wall art 00. And the model, I can hit edit. Model file name, edit. And as you can see, I've already been directed to the correct folder. But this probably isn't going to be the case for you. You should be somewhere around the meshes section. You should be somewhere in this folder structure. If you're not, you'll have to navigate there. You'll just have to navigate to your data folder, but you should be in the meshes kind of zone. So I'm gonna go under AARS, ingredients wall art, and then select wall zero zero. And as you can see, it's appeared in the preview window and I can hit G to hide the ground. And if it's a bit dark or you wanna change it, you can tweak the lighting, but it will take a few seconds. There we go. And I'm just going to hit OK. OK again. And then I'm going to search for that in my filter and drag and drop it in. Now, if you have placed your new resources in the data folder while the creation kit was already loaded, you might find that the first time that you drag and drop this in, you'll get a big red exclamation mark marker. And the way that you fix this is you just hit F5, just click into the render window first, hit F5, 
and after a few seconds you should see that something flickers usually the cell view or even the render window itself and your resource should then appear it's just a matter of the creation kit needing a refresh to recognize the new meshes and textures and such that have been placed in the data folder while it was loaded so i've got that in there and i can just place it on the wall now let's say you're dealing with about well what is it 16 meshes we've just downloaded let's say i want to get all 16 of those meshes into the creation kit and i don't want to have to go through this method of selecting every single one every single time there is an easier way of doing it so if we just minimize the creation kit head to my data folder and find those meshes so let's navigate there again and i've got all 16 of them here what i can do is just make sure the creation kit is opened up there get my windows explorer over the top and i can drag and drop the selected items into the object window and you'll see it just flickers there and if i search for their exact name as they are in the folder it should have placed them into the creation kit under those names now obviously this is not good practice to leave them named as wall 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and so on so you're going to want to double click on each of them and rename them now in this case i'm going to go wall art and then dash and then i'm going to leave it to that so i'm going to copy that Control and c and then i'm going to name them each so we've got zero zero there actually so that's probably not one that we want to redo again so i'll just start with one and i'll hit ok don't create a new form and click yes to the reference changes and then you can just Control and v and then name each one of them now i'm not going to do that right now i'm just going to leave the rest of those but you get the idea so search for wall art we've got those there so that's perfect now when you are obviously going to upload your mod and if you need to know how to include all the files into a bsa later on when you do come to upload then you can check out my bsa video which will be on screen now but when you do come to upload you'll find that the more resources that you use obviously the file size is going to be larger and one really good way of cutting down the file size is to use texture sets now as you can see each of these are exactly the same mesh and they've just got a slightly different texture for the sort of painting if you like or more drawing whatever you want to call it so it doesn't make sense to have a mesh for every single one of these so you've got 16 separate meshes when every single one is exactly the same mesh and in this case we can just use the one mesh and use texture sets to overlay on the top and have different forms of that item so the way i'm going to do this is i'm just going to create from scratch as if i hadn't placed these in and i'm going to select wall zero zero hit ok and i'm going to call this new so i'll put that in and let's say I want another version of new, but I just want to change that. So as you can see here, when you go edit, you'll see that you've got a list of the different sections or different parts, if you like, of this mesh. Now under the 3D name, sometimes it's named nicely and you'll know which bit you're editing. So it might say frame, but in this case it doesn't, and in most cases it doesn't. So it's, it's not very helpful in terms of the name. So what I usually do to add a texture set is up click and new, and you'll get this window here in a filter, and you would type in the name of your texture set. Now I'll show you how to make that in a moment, but I just use this quick trick to know which part I'll be placing a texture on. So I just hit whatever comes up there and you'll see it change. So we know that that part there is the part that we want to put our texture set and obviously that part's going to be the frame so you just hit delete if you want to remove a texture set whether you've done what i've just done to test it or whether you've put the wrong one on accidentally or you need to change it and i'm just going to leave that for a moment so we need to go ahead and make a texture set for each of the textures for these meshes so the way we do this is go into miscellaneous texture set alt click and new give it a unique id i like to be fairly organized if you haven't noticed with my ids and go with wall art and then whichever one we want so i'm going to go with six i'm going to make a version for six now the diffuse is obviously just the normal dds and i'm going to need to navigate to my textures again similar to when we put in the meshes in you should be navigated somewhere close to textures if not just the texture folder itself and then you want to navigate to the wall art and I'm going to select number six here. And this is a game where Sage Thumbs really comes in handy. I can see exactly what I'm using. 
So hit OK on there and it should show. And then you'll need your normal map. So hit edit again and it's usually the purple one with the, the N. So that one there. Now you might have some others that you need to set here like glow maps, but in this case it's just these two here. So you've also got a number of other options which I'm not going to be going over and you don't tend to have to use most of the time anyway. So you can just go ahead, hit OK, and then we can go back to our wall art under static, double click, and change this to a number six. So I'm going to alt click and new on that part, and I'm going to type in the name of my texture set. So my wall art there, hit OK, and as you can see, it's changed it. And like I said, we can now have a new version of this and it's using the zero zero mesh every single time but just overlaying the different versions of the texture. So that means that we just include the one mesh and all the textures which will cut down on the size of our mod in the end and that's really really good. Okay, so now that I've shown you how to get your meshes and textures into your mod, into the creation kit, we need to cover managing your resources and also what's the best way to have them incorporated into your BSA. Now, the first thing is first. I tend to keep a copy of all the mod resources that I download. This is for a number of reasons. It can be just in case it's moved or deleted off of the Nexus or whatever side I've got it from and I need to keep a copy somewhere because I can't gain access to it again. Uh, it's nice for backups in case I make any changes to them and it's just generally a good idea to keep them backed up. Let's say I do a complete reinstallation of my machine. I can just grab these and drag and drop them back into the data folder and I don't have to go and re-download them all again. So it's really useful just to keep somewhere on your hard drive where you can keep them stored as backups and also every time they're updated you might want to go ahead and update this as well. So it's also good to check back with your favourite resource providers to see if they've added anything new. I know that a number of these have at the time of this video quite recently added some new stuff. So the next thing is folder structure. Now the way that I've shown you to do things at the moment is just drag and drop the meshes and textures into the data folder and then just navigate to them how they are laid out in here. Now this is nice and simple and it's very little effort and then when you go ahead and pack up your BSA you just have to include that same folder structure into your BSA as you'll see in my BSA video. So again just go and watch that uh, before you, you carry on with this if you're not sure about packing up a BSA. Now the reason why you might not want to do this method and it's actually rather recommended that you do it another way is because let's say your mod has everything laid out as it is by the resource provider so it's under AARS ingredients wall art and so on but then there's another mod that somebody installs on top of your mod that makes changes to these whether they be good or bad changes it's also going to affect your mod now if you were to include this stuff in your own folder structure in my case Corinthia Tower Reborn has its own folder structure for things out the way nothing else is going to edit it if you include it in here and everything's going to remain untouched by any other mod. However, doing this means that if you change the directory or the file paths of your textures, you're going to have to update the meshes to look at the same location. So I'm just going to quickly load up a mesh and give you a quick example. So if we click on one of these and go under the nitro shape, make our way to the texture, you'll see that it navigates to textures, furniture, noble, noble, furniture, chest. Now let's say I was moving this to my own folder structure. I'm going to have to open every single mesh that I'm using and redirect it there. Now this is fairly long winded and there's not really many quick ways of getting this done very, very fast. So that's why it's a bad thing. Now, if you're using just a few modders resources, a few meshes here and there, then you, you're good to go ahead and just do that. I'm not going to be covering that in this video because it's not really a NIFScope tutorial and you'll be able to find information out there on how to just quickly redirect your, your texture paths anywhere on your meshes. But if you know how to change the texture path on meshes, then it's strongly recommended that you go ahead and do it that way. But if you don't really want all the hassle and you're not too worried about other mods overwriting the meshes and textures of the resources that you're using in your mods, then you're fine to go ahead and just do it that way. So just include everything as it already is.
And that is it for this tutorial video. So I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you have any other interesting ways of managing your mod resources or you do things a little different, I'd like to hear from you. And if you do use any of the modders resources on the Skyrim Nexus, then be sure to hit that endorse button if you find them useful and use them in your own mods. I do have my own resource page as well, which you can go ahead and check out. All the links for everything will be in the description below. Of course, you can follow me on my social media. Facebook is where I post most of my things. And I have a Steam group, which you can follow if you want to catch my Twitch streams live, as I do sort of a nice little event notification that pops up now. So hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.